George Bruno with the 21 Report. We're at the 21 Convention Patriarch Edition. And I'm talking to Elliot Hulse and his father, Mr. Hulse. Thanks, George. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you, George. So you just got yeah. off stage not yeah. too long ago. What were you talking about? Uh, family, mainly. That's uh, what it was all about. Strong family, mentally and physically. So that's the main subject here that we're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, discipline of kids relationship with your spouse and uh, basically that's what that's what it was all about right mm -hmm. yeah. it reminds me of uh, when I had the talk with uh, Steve Williams and we had talked about this you and I where he would remind his children you are a Williams mm -hmm. and you remind your children they are a Hulse. This is how Hulses act. This is what they do. This is the character of a Hulse. Mm -hmm. And every family has character and characteristics. What would you say are the highlights? What is it like to be a Hulse? Strength. Like I told you yesterday, it was so funny to hear him say the same thing while he was standing up there. That is uh, our foundation. Making men strong again. Yeah, to be strong. strong. And you didn't, you didn't put your heads together to come up with the same thing. That's just a common thread that's in your family. Yeah, that's in our blood. I, we went to Belize this summer, uh, and I got to meet some of his you know, uncles. And, you know, old, and I discovered, I found out that his great uncle would wrestle bulls. He's the guy that they would call to, if you want to get the bull, you know, in the truck or whatever, you call our ancestor, and he, he's the one that would catch it, wrestle it, and get it where it needs to be. Wow. That's <laughs> so there's physical strength, yeah. and also strength of character, energy, yeah. a strong voice, you hear the way my dad talks, just yeah. a strong presence, strong sense of being. Yes. How do you overcome difficulty? Uh, it all depends on what kind of difficulty you're talking about, because um, difficulty for me is I leave it alone because I have no controls of anything in my life. The Almighty Man, man up there, he controls everything. So if you have a problem, you think it's a problem, you leave it alone to him, which is difficult, right? Takes faith. Yeah, that. well, that's what I'm saying. So if you leave it alone, it will play itself out. See, we have no control of our life, but people think they control. The only control you have in your life is get up every day and apply yourself to make your family better and yourself. That's the only thing you have. Just get up and do something. There's no room for worrying. No. About what? Ask you a simple question. Do you know anyone that worry about a situation or a problem, whatever you want to call it, difficulties, and you fix it? Worrying does nothing. But that's what I'm saying. Energy waste. Right. So I just leave it alone. I go about and do my responsibility. And my responsibility is to make my family mentally, physically strong. That's my responsibility. And I take it very seriously. No destruction. 100% focus. And whatever you do in this life, supposed to be 100% focus. Because when you get destruction, things doesn't work out. So that's how I live my life. So I don't worry about anything. I got nothing to worry about. Tell me one thing that uh, you would worry about. Well, I remember talking to my father right. and asking him for a solution for something. And he said, 
Think about it. And he lives here in Florida. And Florida, not unlike tropical regions in the Caribbean, you might get an afternoon rain. Okay. And it might get dark. But you know the sun's going to be shining yeah. 30 minutes later. He yeah. said sometimes problems are like that. You just let the clouds go mm -hmm. because they're going to pass. So you don't always have to react to everything. You don't always have to try to find a solution to everything. Sometimes not doing something is a strategy. Yeah. That's good. That's a good advice. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> That's what I do. Leave it alone. Go to sleep. Tomorrow you'll forget about it. Yeah. And it goes away by itself because yeah. he takes care of it. Yeah. I think there's a scripture that talks about which one of us can add an inch to our stature by worrying about things. Mm -hmm. We can't. No. Worries makes you weak. I don't want to be weak. You don't sleep. That makes you weak because you're worrying, right? Creates despair. Yeah. We don't want despair. No. Positive. That has been a theme all weekend with all the speakers. I've been talking about hope, positivity, and optimism rather than despair and playing on defense all the time. When you're playing defense all the time, it just wears you out. Yeah. People talking about, all oh, the effects of the media on this, on that, on your children, on your mind. It's like, stop it. Turn the TV off. That's what I say. I haven't watched yeah. TV in three years. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't watch TV myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's a destruction. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so your father gave you good advice. You know. Well, let's put it this way. I don't have to tell my kids those things. They just see. Yeah. They don't see my face like I'm worried. They don't see I'm stressed out or nothing. All they see me is doing things. Create. I'm a creator. You understand? The Almighty is a creator. He created us so we can be creators. Yes. So that's what I do. Create. If you go to my home, all you see is creativity. Mm -hmm. Create beauty. Do you understand? So if you create beauty, then you'll see beauty. You create words, you'll see words. All right, you're a man of faith, so you'll get this. Right. On page one of the good book, right. it says, in the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Creation mm -hmm. was the first thing yeah. that God did. Powerful. Yeah. So he puts us here so we can create like him. Not to destroy. Create a beautiful family. Create a beautiful home. Positive. No negative. That's what I do. I get up every day and create a beautiful environment in my home. In, you see, I create gardens. Beautiful garden. So my kids, they can walk in the garden and see beauty. My grandkids, I create gardens with butterflies. So they can see beauty. They don't see sadness. They don't see worries. They don't see anything negative. And you grew up like this. Yeah. yeah. And my grandkids <laughs> grew up like this. Like, that's the way they're living right now. Wow. Wow. Live right now. It's happening right now when we speak. Yeah. Why would I want to create something that's not beautiful? That's going to make me weak, sad, depressed. Yeah. No, I need medication. I don't want medication. I don't take medication. I don't take no medication. I'm 68 years old and I don't take any medication. 
<laughs> that's a good thing. Because every other 68-year-old I know is, Five, ten, is taking a handful of pills that's every what morning. About. Mm. I'd go to my doctor for a year checkup. He said, I don't need him. He needs me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you figure that out. But I just go for routine. You schedule appointments. Yeah, that's it. For him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go when I feel like. <laughs> right. You know, but I try to go once a year. Right. Just to check myself out, which is a good thing, you know. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. What's the best advice or the best thing that your father modeled for you as you were growing up? To be the best. And that's what he was saying before. And he went even further than saying just to be the best. He always wanted us to be better than him, which I think is a, a rare thing with a lot of fathers or, or male elders, is that they want the young people to be good, they want them to be great, they want them to be the best, but they still want to be in charge. Well, my father realized that at some point you're going to eclipse me, you're going to pass me, you got to be bigger than me, you got to be stronger than me, you got to be better than me. So not only did he hold a high standard, you know, to, to be a strong man like him, but that wasn't good enough. It was, you got to be better than me. And I always thought that that was powerful. That is powerful. Mm -hmm. I might have to share that with my kids. Yeah. Like you got to be better than you. Yeah. And the next generation can be better than better and better. So now you have a great generation. And that's what a legacy is. Yes, that's yeah. a legacy. You know? So why would you want your kid to be not better? Yeah. Because you love. When you love someone, you want everything for them. We're not yeah. rivals with our kids. We're not in competition with our no, children. No. We want the best for them. Oh, yeah. We want them to shine. Yes. Well, and another thing you got to remember, we are the mirror of our kids. Yes. That's big. You know, so, you know, what you do is what your kids are going to do because they learn what they live. You know. And my kids... That's what they do, learn what they live. They work hard and try to make themselves, excel themselves in life, you know what I'm saying? Because you got to keep working and they see me and my wife, we always working. They see nothing else but work because life is work. If you're lazy, you ain't going to have a life, you know, yeah. because right now this is work. Creation. Tell me what's not work. Brushing your teeth in the morning is work. Right. I didn't want to brush my teeth sometime at night. You know, I'd rather go to sleep like that. <laughs> but I brush my teeth. It's a job. Mm -hmm. So long as you understand that life is work, you'll be okay. Yeah. And, you know, another thing you got to understand with people, you can't expect anything from no one. Right. I don't expect anything from no one. Whatever I want and need in this life, that man over there take care of me and I work towards it. Get up every day and work towards what you need and want. Need is the most important thing. Want is a luxury. That's how I look at it. And Have high expectations of yourself. Yes, but you come first. Let me second. Take that back. First, second, third. Then whatever comes after, you always have to help people. You got to help your neighbors, help anyone that's in need. But first you got to take care of your family first. I'm not going to take care of you and help you before I help my kids. Now some people do that. You know, so that's my most important thing is to help. Do right for my family, and then I have no problem doing right for others. Because you got to share. Yes. You know. So that's what I feel about it. One thing that was unique, I think, for us growing up was that, you know, my parents are from Belize, and they ate mostly natural foods. You know, my dad would pick the food off of the trees that he would eat or, you know, catch it. Yeah. And so in our home, it was always critical that we were eating healthy whole foods. And this was 
back in the 80s, you know, when we weren't as privy to what whole good food was. Yeah. And so it would be odd, you know, I'd go to my friend's house or they'd come here and it was definitely a, a stark contrast between the food that was served filling our bodies in our home compared to, you know, many of the people in our neighborhood and friends. And that was his, that was very important to him. So yeah. you guys got to, you got to eat good food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, food is very important. Food is medicine. Yeah, food is medicine. Yeah, so yes. you have to eat good food. Well, the whole thing with food, too. That's why you a, don't take medicine, because right. food is, medicine. is your medicine. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I said something at the session today about uh, appearance, the way you appear, appear to your kids. I mean, you've got to look strong, you've got to look healthy, so your kid can look up at you, that I want to be strong and healthy like my dad. Right. But if my dad is weak and unkept, That's embarrassing. That makes that kid very weak. Sure. So that's a big deal, you know? And people got to do that more, you know? Just try to eat good food. If I tell somebody to eat good food because there's a little bit more money, whatever it is, because everything's expensive, we understand all that, but eventually you're going to spend it on medication anyway. So do it up front, mm -hmm. you know? So that's my, that's my big thing, you know, take care of yourself. You represent your family, you, you, you're a mirror to your, to your kids, you know. It's simple, right? <laughs> yeah. So simple that it's hard for many to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the problem is that I don't understand, and I really, you know, it kind of bugged me out a lot, is that uh, you don't eat good food because it means nothing to you. But you want to go out and buy yourself a brand new car and drive around all these exotic stuff. And you take care of those things, polishing them, cleaning them, doing you know, shiny things. But here you don't take care of yourself. You give yourself junk. You put the best, car, best gas in your car, best tires, wheels. All these things you're doing to this vehicle, which is things, means nothing. And this beautiful body, this gift, you just abuse it by putting crap in there. We put premium fuel <laughs> in exotic and luxury sports cars, but we don't put premium fuel in our bodies. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. And I just, and I just don't, can't relate to that. Mm -hmm. And everything, well, I, I'm not talking about expense, because I'm not talking about just work. Yeah. The bottom line is work. Yeah. You know. And spend your money in things that matters, like your family and yourself. Now, for example, we all need tea to eat. Chew our food. You know? So when you have bad tea and you don't take care of your tea, what do you think happening? You're getting bacteria into your stomach. Yeah. So take care of your tea. <laughs> Take care of your body. I, I've heard it say, ignore your teeth and they'll go away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you chew your food up because that's, you need that for your medicine. Yeah. To digest your medicine. So take care of your teeth instead of driving around a luxury car. I drive around a piece of crap, brother. Yeah. I don't need that show. Point A to point B, that's all I needed for. When did it become important to drive from point A to point B in style? When did that happen? Never. When I, I was a young I, when I was a young man, <laughs> I was happy just to get from A to B. That, that's what I'm talking about. But everybody's gotta have a show to say, look, I own a Mercedes, I own this, I, you know, whatever it is, you know. Right. For what? Yeah. I wanna be able to get up in the morning, do what I wanna do. Strong, happy, run around, play with my grandkids, jump on me, wrestle with me. That's what I want to do. That's my happiness. Not driving around a brand new car or have any kind of luxury or anything. Right. That doesn't mean anything to me. Right. You know? So, but people, why would that mean something for them? I guess I, uh, for me, I look at them and I say to myself, well, maybe that's the way they were brought up. That's the mirror from their parents, you know? So, Can't fix that. They got to want to fix that themselves. Right. You know? I see where you get it from. Yeah. 
I see where you get everything from. <laughs> Even your youth. Mm -hmm. When you told me how old you were, you look 10 years younger than what your age is. And you look 10 years younger, easily, than your and age. And I feel good. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's feeling good. I feel like I can do anything. I'm unstoppable. He was recently just fixing his roof. Roof is it last? I don't. I, I I do my own roof for my house. I do my own gardening. I do all my pruning. I do everything. You my don't house. hire someone. To no, over no, and do no, no. I had nobody. He carried. What, what, there was eighty pound pallets. How much of those? I do whatever I have. Way up a ladder. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Do what I want to do. You know. Don't sit around and be sick and pop in medication and my leg hurt, my back hurt, you know, all this. You create that on your own. Yeah. You know, just pay attention to your body. Take care of your little body that the Almighty gave you. It's a beautiful machine. I was putting up a fence yesterday, but not, not yesterday, uh, about two weeks ago. And I snapped that finger right there. <laughs> If you see that mark right there, yeah. see that? It's yeah. healing, right? Yeah. Well, I snapped that. If it looks crooked, too, because I snapped that out of the damn socket with a big gouge down to the bone. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't go to the doctor or the hospital. My wife told me, you got to go to the hospital. You got to get stitches. What did you do? Just wrap it with duct tape? No, I take that thing and snap that son of a bitch back in, close it as tight <laughs> as I can, and I tell her, you bandage that up. She thinks that was a nut. Yeah. And she's bandaging up like she wasn't like, trying to be gentle. I say, you put that son of a bitch tight. You jam. I want yeah. you to tighten it up. Yeah. Yeah. And tight. And I went back and finished what I was doing. Wow. <laughs> I finished what I was doing first. Wow. Came back in. Later, when I'm all done, clean my shit up. We tighten it up again. I mean, I want to take a shower, come down, put some fresh stuff on again, and that's it. And I just take care of that shit until right now, it start looking good. I couldn't even clean my ass with it before. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> now I can do a lot of stuff with it. I exercise it, see that finger right there, a little different, but yeah. I squeeze that every day and I do yeah. my own therapy. I ain't go to somebody to do no therapy for me. Yeah. That's how it is. <laughs> what can I tell you? Yeah. This interview is going to go down in history, not only in an informational way, but there's going to be people who watch it because of the comedic value. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's this is a feel-good video. Mm -hmm. yeah. It really is. Well, that's what, making all, men, that's what it's all about. Making Men Strong Again with Elliot Hulse and his father, Mr. Hulse. Thank you, gentlemen. No problem. Thank you. <laughs>